You know, I figured out this RC collection problem that I've got. Instead of just buying these full-size ones, I'm just gonna get more of these ones. Welcome back to the Scaled Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today we're taking a first look at the new Element Enduro 24, which is a 24th scale RC from Element. This is Element's first foray into the smaller 24th scale market, and there are a lot of choices out there now to uh, try to grab your dollars. This one's priced very competitively. Let's see how it stacks up. While this is new to Element, it is not a new design overall. This is a rebadged and slightly re-engineered RGT something or other. I'm not familiar with that model. That's what I've been told. But I have also been told that there have been some significant changes to make this an Element through and through. First, of course, it is the body. Totally different little body. Uh, meant to look a bit like the Enduro. Um, you know, close enough for Jazz. I do like this very aggressive and quite colorful paint job. I think they did a nice job on this. Um, definitely a little bit outside the realm of what they've been doing lately. Lots more color, three colors and four colors, four colors uh, painted on the inside to give it that nice shiny look on the outside. This is really outside of Element's realm. Usually their trucks are solid color or offer a bunch of stickers to add some personalization. This one is pre-painted like this from the factory. Nice, looks good, uh, definitely uh, loud and in your face. And I like that. Not much else going on with that body. Uh, stickers for windows, uh, which is fine at this scale. Not really expecting an interior and we'll get into some customization options later on. Remove those body clips to reveal the chassis itself. And what is interesting about this chassis that most people should notice right away is that it is a divorce transfer case. Uh, you've got a chassis mounted servo up front a uh, motor also mounted up front, mated to a transmission, and then a divorce transfer case which supplies the power to both front and rear axles. At this scale, not something I would have anticipated seeing, so that is pretty cool. Steel chassis rails, like I had mentioned there. Uh, all of your electronics and battery are mounted at the rear of the truck, uh, probably to help with weight distribution as having that motor and servo up front is definitely putting a lot of weight over the front axle. Let's also get some quality weight in the back of this truck to help kind of balance it out. And it is pretty balanced. I mean, it is probably a little bit more front heavy uh, than it is rear heavy, but that's good. You want a bit of weight over that front axle to help pull you up over an obstacle. Uh, shocks are just friction dampers. There's no oil inside these, of course, and probably no way of putting oil inside them. The springs are really doing the job of articulating the truck and uh, seem to have enough weight. It is a little bouncy, uh, but that's to be expected at this scale. And that's going to come into play in this kind of first look and review many times over. At this scale is gonna be something that you have to kind of remember. These trucks aren't going to perform the same as your ninth or 10th scale trucks. They are much smaller. So uh, weight distribution is gonna be a lot harder to do. Shocks are gonna be a lot harder to tune. Uh, even axles and how the ESC is gonna perform is going to be different than you would expect in a fuller size model. Uh, plastic links throughout, four link up front, four link in the rear. Despite being all plastic links, the ball ends on those links are metal. So you will get a lot more use out of those than you would a plastic set. And these axles look like they've been molded to kind of match the Enduro style of axle too, which is pretty nice. You can see that they've got the same sort of uh, indentations. They are a little bit larger than uh, some of the other uh, small scale RCs that are on the market right now, but that usually means there's more strength in those axles, which is always a good thing at any scale. It's not a worm gear driven axle, so uh, these wheels are free to spin, um, and uh, that will definitely affect performance. Uh, like I said, a drag brake uh, and the electronics at this scale aren't going to probably be what you would expect in a larger vehicle. Uh, just in some limited testing on the bench, it does move freely and, uh, you know, doesn't get bound up too badly. If you're looking to get a little more performance out of it, I would definitely consider a motor upgrade at some point. I think that would help tremendously. There are no bearings in this truck. They are bushings and plastic ring and pinions. Uh, but I did want to take it apart and show you that that's what's inside this axle. The axle shafts themselves are metal. So there is a bit of metal in there. 
uh, but not all the way through. Otherwise, a nice little addition to the micro RC world or mini RC. I guess you can call it micro, it's pretty small. What do you consider to be a micro or a mini RC? What scale does micro become the scale you're talking about? Anything under 24th scale or anything smaller, even like 32nd scale or 87th scale? Let me know in the comments what you're thinking uh, about what scale kind of constitutes mini or micro. Uh, there are LED lights included in the front bumper, which is a nice addition. They do get brighter as you increase your acceleration. So uh, full acceleration, full brightness, of course. Element does include a Wolfpack 520 milliamp one cell battery, uh, which is perfect for these little guys. You don't need a lot more power than that. They also include a handy USB charger. This is the radio that's included, 2.4 gigahertz. Um, lots of control on there for adjusting your trims and dual rates. Uh, there is a third channel. I guess it's just a button clicking third channel, but there is a third channel nonetheless. Um, to get at the batteries, it's got this innovative kind of slide off trigger, uh, and then all your batteries go in there, which is pretty cool. Um, not the best in the whole world, but at this scale, I'm not expecting very much. At least I can operate it one-handed, so that's good. Uh, just for a frame of reference, I did want to put the 24th scale chassis up against an Element Enduro uh, IFS 10th uh, scale chassis, just so you guys got an idea of how much smaller these really are. Uh, wheels and tires, plastic uh, wheels, these are glued on tires, of course, uh, and it's meant to look probably like a super swamper. Um, but they're not licensed and there is no foams included. At this scale, you really don't need them. So there's a general rundown of the truck itself. Uh, let's put the body back on for the... One thing that I really do like about this chassis layout is that with having that divorce transfer case and your motor and servo right up front, it does offer a lot more options in terms of static model bodies that will fit on this truck without a lot of modification. And that is a reason that I think that this Enduro 24 is going to be really popular. People like to modify, and I'm no different. As soon as I got an SCX24, I put a hard body on it as well. Static models are great for this purpose, and this wheelbase is pretty standard in that 24th scale. There are a lot of 20th scale static models that should fit this without too much trouble. Um, Seeing that you've got a big ESC and battery in the back, you might have to do some trimming or maybe do an SUV style body. That might help kind of conceal a lot of that. And having a bit more room here for a full flat floor is definitely going to be appealing to a lot of kit bashers and model makers that want to have something a little more original, a little more unique. Not to mention the low price of this RTR. I can't even believe that I'm saying this, but seeing that the summer is almost over, where did it go? It's great to have another small scale option that we can use indoors so we can still get that crawling fix. So there you go, a first look at the new Enduro 24. I think this is gonna be a popular model and if you'd like to pick one up, I'll be sure to put a link down below where you can grab one. What kind of hard body would you like to see on the Element Enduro 24? There's a ton of great static model options out there. Why don't you post a suggestion down below? I love reading through your comments and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. I think that's gonna do it. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon.